So the Sony ZV-1 has been marketed as the vlogger camera or starter YouTube camera. And when I first got the ZV-1, it was a gift to myself, a 100 subscriber gift to myself. Well, I, I did buy it just a little bit before, admittedly, but I got a deal on it. Though the deal was like you know, 50 bucks off, 100 bucks off. You know, The deals on these aren't that great. They still are $750 for this little camera. It's not an interchangeable lens or anything like that. But for a camera that shoots 4K, and that's a Sony, and the color science and the autofocus and all that, uh, it seemed like a good deal. And I've been mostly happy with this camera. The biggest thing about this camera that is a downfall for people that get it is the lack of an interchangeable lens. But that's not really that huge of a deal because one of its best features is that it doesn't have an interchangeable lens and because of that it's very small and very compact therefore you can just bring it along wherever you want and it's not that annoying to have around now portability probably isn't your main concern if you're like a photographer or something like that but for a lot of people that are just starting out having a big mirrorless camera uh, it doesn't make that much sense and the whole thing about this is that it's leaned towards convenience and user-friendly features uh, the power button is up top and it's very clearly indicated there's also a led indicator showing that it is recording and it's right in front of you so you see it when you're looking at the lens as well as a flippy out camera that i'm looking at right now that you can look at yourself at and it's nice to have versus just having something like a phone camera which i used in the past where you would never really know what you look like unless you use the front facing camera, which looked really bad and didn't even shoot in 4K. Speaking of 4K, that's what I've been shooting in so far. Now, switching to 1080p, now the 1080p video itself actually looks pretty darn good. I actually prefer the 1080p video here and there. I mean, everything I do for B-roll is in 60 hertz 1080p and then I slow it down by half to make the video look a little bit smoother when I'm doing panning shots. For what I use in particular, this camera is B-roll product for videography. And for that, it's done pretty well, but the biggest thing, again, that you lose by having it conveniently with you everywhere you go is, uh, again, no interchangeable lens, so macro shots or really far away telephotos is uh, a little lacking. But on the bright side, having it small means I could just record things wherever I want. And most of the stuff I do, or most of the shots I do, has been just on campus or at a park or in downtown. So in that sense, it's better than a normal camera because I think with a big camera that is really heavy with a strap around my chest and I'm going around there changing lenses, I think I'd be kicked out of a few places. But by the way, if you're really looking to not be kicked out of places with a camera, phone camera is the way to go still. It always has been, always will be. Unless you have a big old stabilizer on it, then yeah, you're gonna get kicked out of places. So phones have their place, but um, I don't know if you can quite notice, but it does look a lot worse in my opinion. Now at my home, this little studio I've set up for my YouTube videos, uh, I'm not worrying about portability or being kicked out. And that's one thing I want to touch in particular. Everyone that makes videos to Think Media or uh, Potato Jet, they kind of recommend here and there, just use your smartphone. Uh, your smartphone's fine. I, I think a lot of my initial videos with the smartphone looked okay. Low light would have these weird warping effects. And I honestly tried to do a bit of the video side by side with my phone, the camera, but I didn't really find much value in that. Instead, I think for people that are looking for a camera to set up their YouTube channel, Instagram, Vine, not Vine, TikTok and stuff like that. Uh, if you want a good camera, you want to make it look better. And admittedly for me, it's just nerding about cameras. I study electrical based stuff, electrical engineering specifically. So I love all the technology about it. So the need for it is kind of your preference on making it look better. I actually recommend getting a good tripod first. Now I have this little tripod here from SD, uh, uh, basically a newer off-brand, even though newer is kind of off-brand itself. Uh, and I can get top-down shots and it has a very high range where I can stand up just like this with my background, my lights, and it looks good. 
Uh, most people really won't care too much about the specific quality of the video until you're trying to do more tricky shots or things that are a bit more ambitious. So for me personally, I actually started off thinking I would never get a camera. Uh, I thought just my phone camera is fine. Uh, I'm good. I got a good tripod. I had a little cheap one for Amazon for like 30 bucks first, but uh, that ended up breaking. Uh, then I got a little cheap newer slider, a little carbon fiber one, about 30, 40 bucks. And that was really useful. And then when I got this real big tripod, I adored it. And then I got a fluid head to do more shots that looked a little bit more intriguing and satisfying to me. Uh, and even before you do the video itself, you should upgrade your audio and lighting. I just used two big soft boxes I got on Amazon for around 40, 30 bucks. And I think it does a lot more to your video than a good camera because if you're in your mom's basement or if you're in a garage or if you're just in a poorly lit environment, even if you don't think it's poorly lit because you have decent lighting in your eyes, you're going to figure out that lighting will make or break a video and good lighting can make a bigger difference than a good sensor and a good camera. So my recommendation is get a live box or something like that first. If you're looking for a camera stuff, make sure you get that first. If you're on the go doing shots, I recommend getting one of these. This is a portable light, little LED lights. This uh, very useful for uh, outdoors on the go shooting. And I think getting something with a horseshoe mount for your phone, a little tripod for that, and that setup would be important to do first. Now, another big thing about the Sony and, well, any advice you use for recording is audio. I'm using a video micro from Rode. I think it sounds pretty good, and I think it's a good improvement over my last videos. I used to use the built-in microphone off the Sony, and the Sony's built-in mic is actually not that bad. It's an omnidirectional microphone though, so if you have a lot of backgrounds, which I do, and I try my best to get it out, it's still gonna show up in your video, and it's still gonna kinda sound tinny to it. I honestly kinda hate the way it sounded. You can get an external USB microphone if you want, like a, a Blue Yeti that I used to have, but that also had a lot of problems with sound. A phone sounds decent. Uh, I've tried to amplify it on my clip that you saw shortly before, but it still kind of sounds shallow and still, even the video micro uh, mic is not that great and I, I want better, but it's small, it's portable, it's what goes with it. And I think with my mini tripod and the micro, it looks really sleek on the ZV-1. But I don't mean to go off the rails here. After all, this is a Sony ZV-1 review. Uh, but I do realize for most people, what this is marketing towards is someone's very first video camera. And I do feel inclined to give more information than other people gave me on YouTube when I started to do this stuff for fun. And admittedly, I'm by no means a professional or that crazy good at it or decent. Uh, one major thing you should really consider before getting invested into a camera and uh, even a lot of the hardware is editing your videos. Now I've used HitFilm and then I've used Adobe Premiere Pro, but Adobe Premiere Pro is pretty expensive and requires a subscription fee. Uh, I'm a student at UTA, so I pay about 20 bucks a month for this. So I got a big discount. This is like 50 bucks a month for the uh, Adobe Cloud of Photoshop and all that stuff if you're not a student. And for that price, it's uh, not worth it. And if you're using Apple, you want to use their editing software, which is pretty good. The biggest thing I want to touch on is that your editing makes a lot more difference. And making it smooth and consistent is really hard and difficult and looks easier than it is. Uh, one thing I found out that I did at the very beginning is I would do a lot of effects and I would have done a lot of editing. And right now I'll show you, I did a lot of vignetting and I decided to do a lot of also uh, color science to change the colors. Uh, it turns out that that really didn't matter too much. And just getting comfortable to a camera will be hard enough being, you know, just talking to it and sounding like yourself. Uh, that's not too easy. So before doing a purchase of a camera, which a lot of people go into YouTube and I've had a lot of friends on campus say, hey, I want to do videos. And I saw you got 100 subscribers already. And I got this and I got this. I got the Canon M50. I got the Sony ZV-1. I got this Nikon. People use Nikon for videos. Ugh. But seriously, you really shouldn't buy a camera. You're at least like, 
I don't know, five, ten videos in? At least know you want to do it as a hobby. At least decide if it's fun or not for you. And admittedly, since of COVID, this has been very fun for me. And I think I just wanted to note that for people doing this because a lot of people take it too seriously, spend too much money and time. And I just wanted to give more advice on it. And this is just a weird video for me in the first place. So I just wanted to give you information that I thought would be worthwhile. So please experiment with your hardware you have now and learn how to video edit and just kind of come up with an idea how you make a video before you spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on any camera. But back to the sewing. There is one important thing to consider upgrading from a phone camera to a real camera like the ZV-1, and that is low light performance. Now, for a phone camera at this time of night, it would be, it is, pitch black where you can't see anything besides the LEDs behind me. Versus this, you can see much, much more, and can be usable at darker times of the night. So, disclaimers aside, there is just a few last things I want to touch on. First off, I'm going to use the onboard audio from the Sony camera to give you a sample of what it sounds like with the same noise reduction and also the same uh, multiband compressor I used in Adobe for this clip. Also, there's a few things about the camera itself I want to talk about. The very first is runtime. When you first get this camera and you play with it, you press record, uh, especially if you're recording 4K, it lasts about five or six minutes till it shuts off from overheating, it says it's too hot, and stops recording. It'll, it'll tell you on the flippy screen with a little orange indicator. Uh, that's kind of inconvenient, and in the settings, you can actually switch to it and to prioritize runtime versus aperture or, uh, was it focus? I don't quite remember. The battery life itself is fairly good. For recording, I get about two hours of use, not continuous use, even with prioritizing runtime. It only gets about, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 minutes of video till it uh, shuts down and has issues or sometimes just run out of memory at that point. But the battery they're using is similar to the other models that came before this. So finding batteries online is plentiful and I was able to get a three pack with carrying cases with a charger for like 30 bucks. So I have no problem just carrying this around and shooting all day and not really having to worry about battery life besides taking off the tripod and put the new battery in. Also because it's so small, not using a tripod is common. I mean, I used it out there vlogging in daylight and you can see that. And the dynamic range of this camera is better than a phone and there's more technical stuff about it with low light, magenta shifting and stuff like that that I can go into a little bit, but I quite frankly wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Again, this has been primarily for someone that's just started to YouTube stuff or done it for a while or whatever form of content creation and has been searching religiously for videos of the camera and just needs another person talking about it in a way that may suit them. That's what I'm trying to do. Now going back to the usability and the menus, the menus are fine, you get used to it. Uh, having the photo and video mode separate with the presets that you use it and won't let you take video or picture depending what mode you're on is a bit confusing and I, I don't know what to use. Uh, also, focus hunting's been kind of a thing with me. I don't know if you saw it in the last major clip I had sitting by my computer, but the focus will get to you real fast and a lot of times it'll stick on you. But if you have a lot of things going on, it'll tend to waver just a little bit till it catches focus back on the face. Now this is mainly because I've been using product showcase mode which again is advertised a lot in other videos, but it's actually kind of hard to find <laughs> in the menus. It is so deep in there. I wish they sorted out for the things that you're gonna use the most, like right up front. I wish the uh, resolution and the frame rate and all those settings were just front and center and everything else, depending how niche it is, goes back versus just, I believe, alphabetical order or something, because I think it's like the third page for uh, resolution and frame rate. But besides that, the usability on this thing's great. The little knob that lets you change to zoom in or zoom out is actually quite nice. It does it really slowly in video. I'm not sure it's gonna let me do it right now. There you go. Ooh. Ah, yeah. So zooming in from the camera right there, kind of like a camcorder, that's actually really useful to use. And especially for photos, it's very satisfying to switch to a more telephoto mode versus a 
wide angle mode and uh, get up close there. It is quite nice, but it doesn't do too well with macro shots getting really close up there. It tends to focus hunt quite a lot and shooting earbuds especially that I had problems with or like certain parts of a phone, it just wouldn't want to focus into it because mainly it's a black object or a white object and it's glossy or matte and getting the details have been a little hard with it, but I, I've gotten used to it just a bit. But anyways, this video has been very long enough and I'm not an expert on cameras. I'm not an expert on most things, but for this specifically, a lot of the small nitty gritty bits about this camera versus another, I'm not too good at. This is mainly for the, this is mainly for what this camera is marketed to. Content creators, vloggers, starter people, and in general, uh, you may be taking yourself too seriously. You may think you have to buy a camera before you make anything, and I say just try it out first because I don't want you to waste money. That's why I'm giving you so many disclaimers in the video, and I'm just trying to reach out and let you know you don't need this. But if you want this, if you want the camera, if you want the ZV-1, it's really good. I mean, for again, stuff like a phone, it's hard to show because what I see from the camera or hooking up directly to my computer is different because I don't have the same compression from YouTube and you may be watching this in 40p, 360p, 720p. Doesn't look the same as how I see it. And from recording on this, from using it, it's been a noticeable improvement and I've really enjoyed the Sony ZV-1. I love this little camera. But I just want people to buy it with caution to know that they're actually going to use it. Because this is just cheap enough for people to think they're making an investment and then not using it and just too expensive enough for people that are just starting out and thinking that they have to have it. Which you don't. You don't need a real big camera like this. Even though this camera is relatively tiny. But still, thank you for watching. Uh, my videos are a lot different from this one. but. One thing I always do with my videos, I check down the comments down below, I keep up with everything, and I try to answer as many questions as you have. This has been a freeform vlog weird hybrid video I've made, and I don't expect them to be exactly like this in the future because this is just me experimenting. The exact thing that people should do when they're making stuff in the first place. So, thanks for watching, see you later.